Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and this is my next video on the Unreal Engine 4 blueprints. Um, I'm actually not going to number this one, uh, at least not correctly yet, because I'm actually skipping ahead a bit. Um, just because I want to show you what I've been doing currently and um, I'm going to make this video eventually anyway. So I just sort of skipped ahead to keep it current, because this is what I've been working on. Uh, the last couple of days. So today we're going to work with um, spawning actors. Oh yeah, I'm also recording in a higher frame rate, so we'll see how how it goes. Or actually in a lower frame rate, but how a res resolution. Um, because uh, I just want the extra space for all the tools and making it in a lower resolution um, just sort of sucks, but the frame rate really doesn't matter much because I'm only going to jump into the game uh, every so often. So today we're going to work with for loops as well as spawning blueprints. And I actually have created the blueprint we're going to spawn already, which is uh, the spike blueprint here at the bottom. Because if you're making a platformer game um, with spikes, you obviously don't want to place them all individually. Um, instead we're going to make a dynamic sort of um, blueprint that will spawn the uh, every single spike and will just set a start point and an end point and it will sort of uh, fill in the blank with um, instances of our spike here. And um, let's just make a new blueprint which is an actor and let's just call it uh, tutorial spikes and we'll just jump into this so for components we're only going to use uh, one component which is going to be the start point and it's going to be a bulletin no a billboard um, which is just going to be uh, sort of the starting point, so let's just pick one. It's a handle and go with that. And then we go into our graph. Uh, as you can see, we already have the build board here. Um, I'll just add a tick as well. No, I'm going to add a start, what's it called? Begin play. Event, begin play. That's what we're going to use. Uh, unfortunately, you can't spawn actors or blueprints in the construction script, which would be nice, because that would allow us to sort of drag it around while we're editing. Uh, so unfortunately, we're only going to be able to um, do it in the uh, event graph, which means it's not going to show up in the editor. Um, but I don't know if it's possible to get around that, so let's just roll with it. So the build board is going to be our starting point. And then we're actually going to make something that I haven't done. I'm going to make a variable and point that's going to be a vector. And I'm also going to click down here where it says um, editable. And you can see the 3D widget one sort of uh, becomes wider. So we're actually going to use the widget one as well. So if we just compile this, we save, we go back, and we drag this into our view here. You can see we have the sort of circle that's the starting point. And then there's a diamond shape. Um, when I have this selected, there's a sort of diamond or gem shape thingy. And if I click on it, it says end point. So this is an um, editable variable, and as you can see in the top here, it is a vector because it has an x, y, and z. And as I edit it, you can see it um, it changes values. So this is a, a vector that we can drag around in space, which is really useful for some stuff. For instance, I create the goal for this. It has, as you can see up here, it's really fuzzy, but it the goal for um, for my game here is actually spawned by the start uh, when the game launches. Um, so this is what we're going to use today. 
it has a beginning point and an end point. And in between those we're going to spawn the spikes. Um, so we obviously need to start with some logic here. Uh, we're just going to make a sequence. No, first we're going to initiate. Um, we're actually going to use this and we're going to break this vector and we will just make um, if you didn't see it the two axes that changes is the Y and Z um, so we're just going to make one float that is size oops oops again I can type so one size Z and one size Y and we're just going to set both of them um, because this means that we won't be having to every time we want a value from this we won't uh, have to make the two nodes instead we can just use either of those um, and I'm going to use the sequence because I'm going to compare uh, both of these so size Z and size Y um, so if size Z, let's see here if this is equal to um, so let's see here size Z is up and down and this is left and right so for the first example I'm just going to make the right one because I have a working one uh, already which I will jump to later um, so let's just make the one that goes to the right which means that the Y is going to be positive so if size is if Z is 0 and if Y is 0 Um, this is sort of problematic because you will run into problems like um, if you change both of the values it's only going to run the first one um, I have some exception throwing in my real example uh, just to make sure that you uh, it's not going to spawn anything weird uh, if you have sort of di diagonal shapes um, it's an option you could include it if you wanted to um, I might actually do it in my real example later uh, but yeah so let's start with this one and then we make another branch um, or two other branches and in this case we're going to use y if y is bigger than wrong one bigger than zero Um, I could have gone with a smaller one as well uh, this is just sort of to make it similar to my other example I actually have it open on my other screen just to make sure that um, it looks sort of similar so um, if y is bigger than 0 and z is 0 as you can see here it's bigger than 0 and 0 um, it goes to the right so in this case what we want to do is spawn a number of actors so let's just drag out spawn actor from class this is what we're going to use and to plug in the spikes I'll just select this move it over and grab my spikes I'll click this and use the arrow to plug it in now it's really really tiny but hopefully uh, you can see it says class spike seed there um, so this is the spawning bit and we obviously have to run this for as many times as there is space between the starting node and the end node and for this we're going to use a for loop um, the first index will always be zero and now we need to get to the sort of funky stuff which is going to be um, the math or 
the sort of logic behind it all. Because um, if you didn't pick it up, this one is a local vector. So it's always going to return the difference between this point and this point. Uh, so you can't use uh, exposed widgets to you can't use get world position on them because it's always going to return um, this funky number. So you will always have to um, start with the default one and then add the vector to to get to where the endpoint is. Um, but the benefit in this case is that it will always return um, a sort of usable value on the y-axis or x-axis. Uh, so we're just going to grab that value and start with that. So we grab our size y, which is the starting point, and then we're just going to divide this and just use the slash to get the uh, float, and we're going to divide it by 50. Uh, it's just an arbitrary number, or uh, it's actually the size of my spike model or blueprint, um, which is 50 units square. Um, if you have a different size, obviously you just pick that number. Um, and since this can be returned as um, a negative value, we can't use it as it is. Uh, because what we're going to do with this is we're going to run the for loop for as many times as needed between zero, which is the starting, and last index, which we're, it's what we're going to get from this. So we, if we divide this by 50, we're going to get something like you know, 5.75 or something. Um, so we'll have to get rid of those extra numbers. And since it can also be negative 5.75, um, we have to start with abs. Um, the absolute, um, which is basically, this just says, if it's negative, uh, make it positive. So regardless of what's plugged in at the start here, this will always be a positive value of that number. And if we have our, it just says, returns the absolute positive value of A. Um, and then we're also going to do another thing, which you get with the percentage, which is modulo. Uh, we used to call it modulus in uh, my classes, programming classes. Um, this just returns the, um, the rest uh, of whatever you plug in at the bottom. So let's say you have um, 50 here at the start. If you do that by modulo 5, uh, you basically remove every time 5 uh, is possible in the number. So if you have 50, uh, or let's just start with an easier number. If you have 10 modulo 5, it becomes 0 because you take 5 two times and then there's 0 left over. So if you take 3 into 10, um, you take three away three times and you get one left over, so the result is one. And in this case, what we're going to get is if we subtract and we plug in one, uh, it's going to subtract whatever is above one uh, from the, uh, the value we get here, uh, the division by 50. So basically this returns um, a full number it basically just rounds down uh, to an even number, and this just makes it a positive number. Um, so what we'll get out here is a positive even number, uh, not an even number, but uh, an int basically that rounds down. Um, you can just go with uh, round. There is a round node. If we just drag it out here, the problem with this one is it rounds to the nearest integer. Um, if that's what you want, go with it. In this case, I want um, I wanted the round down basically, so that's why I have to do this sort of funky stuff. Um, and then to plug it in here, we just convert float to int. So just drag it on here, and that's where we get our um, we get our last index. Um, and this is basically the for loop. Um, the next step is actually making the 
um, the position um, because if we just plug it in here it's going to work um, the problem is it will obviously spawn them at the exact same spot and you're not going to have um, a lot of use from them and I can actually show you this oh, oh yeah I can't because it has to have um, default default value is invalid um, because we have to plug something into the spawn transform here um, and as I said before the size of my prop is 50 so for every index we're just going to multiply this in by a float that is 50 you could obviously use an int as well so, um, and then we're going to add this to as I said before the you have to use the world position of the billboard you can't use the world position of the endpoint so we just type get world location and we break break vector and since we're using the size y in this case we're going to use the y-axis um, yeah we have to first make a vector and then make a transform so make vector and we hook it into the y and x is in my case 192 because I've said this before that's just the arbitrary central line of the uh, the game I've made um, index 50 this should be pretty much it and then we use make transform and we hook it in so this time it should not throw any sort of errors and it doesn't which is excellent and then when I go into my game as you can see it's spawned these five separate little nodes and if I drag it out it will spawn more of them and if I make it sort of tiny it should probably just spawn one Yeah. so that's working um, it has a bit of funky collision and it also killed me as you can see there but it only kills uh, from the top basically because that's just how I've set it up uh, you're not supposed to be able to jump up into them from below um, so that is basically it in one direction at least because the problem with this is if we um, let's just drag it up into the sky here um, so if we drag it upwards uh, nothing happens because um, because this is only uh, one direction obviously but if I open my not that one if I open my working example um, I actually plug in the uh, this is just some sort of basic stuff um, I plug in a rotation into the make transform here um, so this is right facing up this is the one we made um, it's basically the exact same thing except I didn't know that you could plug in um, uh, plug in you know float to int straight away because you couldn't in the beta um, so I have two different weird conversions here float to string string to int which um, is what I used in the beta and here I also have sort of exceptions spike to small but everything else is the same so in this um, going to the right one I have nothing in the rotation but um, as you can see here this is left facing down basically if I drag in my example here it just has a different handle but it has the same sort of endpoint setup so if I drag this in I drag it off to the left as you can see they're rotated 180 degrees and if I sort of make it face down it uh, the spikes uh, whatever you want to call them 
go to the right, and if I go up, they face to the left. So I just have four different... Um, this is just the basic logic. This is the error handling at the start here. So we have zero rotation, 180, 90, and minus 90. Uh, let's say 270 instead. So those are just the um, the different make transforms that make all the difference. Um, and using sort of decent logic at the start here, make sure that um, it's all going to work. Now, as I said before, um, in my case, it doesn't work. If I do it diagonally, it just says diagonal spikes. Um, I could also add um, a location to that, I suppose. Uh, but you could make them uh, work diagonally as well, just by adding, uh, instead of just adding to one axis, you could add to the, to the z-axis in this case as well, uh, which would make them look more like a sort of a staircase. And you could actually use this to create staircases if you want. Instead of spawning spikes, you just spawn uh, sort of basic builder blocks, um, and you have your stairs. So really simple stuff, just use a for loop to make, um, make sure you know the size of your prop and spawn as many of them as you need uh, by just plugging it in. Um, I'm actually just going to show you quickly how the spikes works as well because they're super simple. Um, I just have a tick and then I have a single line trace. Uh, I can set it to one frame just to show you how it works. Uh, so if we go back into the game here, oh yeah, it doesn't work because it's diagonal. So let's just set this to zero in one direction. And as you can see at the top here, there's a red line. And if I jump into it, it kills me by colliding. And there's also a weird floating sphere here. Um, yeah, now unfortunately, uh, or <laughs> amazingly enough, it actually works as terrain for my uh, sort of weird spinny ball to move along. Uh, but yeah, the funny thing with this, or not the funny thing, I think it's sort of clever, uh, is that they um, they also rotate. The um, If I go into the spikes, I actually have um, a vector. Um, so uh, this is for the line trace start, and then at the bottom here is the end. So at uh, 25 and 50, so up 50 and right 25, and then up 50 and left 25. Um, I have vectors, and then I rotate the vectors based on the um, the base component world transform, as you can see here. Um, I get the position from this. And then I just rotate the vector that uh, gets the corners uh, to make sure that the line trace follows the corners. And then I just have this sort of very basic logic using my uh, interface here that I haven't talked about yet. Or if you actually watch them in order once I get to this point, you might actually have seen the interface and how interfacing works with blueprints. But yeah. That is my pretty um, pretty advanced compared to my other videos, um, but I hope you got something out of this, even if you watched them from the last one, which I think was number three, and to this one. And if not, just wait for my other ones to come up, and I will hopefully get them into some sort of decent learning curve. The next one is going to be on inputs and sort of basic controls. But this is just for using for loops, spawning your actors, and working with these 3D widget extended vectors. So this has been Jonas. Hopefully this video will come out much better uh, when it comes to quality. And thank you for watching.